Hey everyone, Billy Creston here, also known as Bill from Field of Geeks. And after going through multiple directors, producers, and delays, the long-anticipated adaptation of the popular video game series Five Nights at Freddy's has finally been brought to life thanks to Jason Blum of Blumhouse Studios and Scott Cawthon, the creator of the FNAF franchise. The film grossed $80 million domestically in its opening weekend, surpassing all previous Blumhouse films, and is the second highest gross for a video game-based film behind Illumination's Super Mario Brothers movie, which we already talked about previously. The film made back its $20 million budget, the highest so far for a Blumhouse production, even before releasing in theaters. Uh, and that was mainly due to selling the streaming and theatrical distribution rights. With the success of this film, at least two more are in the works, with Matthew Lillard being signed to a three-picture deal already. And let's face it, there hasn't been a more successful franchise than Five Nights at Freddy's, with multiple games, books, and merchandise available. And the lore of this franchise is just massive. In today's review, like most reviews, We'll be discussing five good and five not so good aspects of this film. And for the first time ever, I have a special guest to accompany me on this journey. Of course, in discussing this film, spoilers will be discussed. So if you haven't seen the film yet, be sure to come back to this review after you've seen it. Without any further ado, let us begin. Today, as I said, I have a very special guest joining me, my daughter, Steli, who's herself a big fan of the FNAF games who enjoyed the movie just as much as I did. Say hi, Steli. Hi, everyone. I'm here today with my dad. And what are we talking about today? Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah? Did you like the movie? Yeah, I've watched a lot of um, people like um, doing FNAF characters and doing a bunch of like the original characters, so I'm excited. Yeah, and it's been a long time since you've been on the channel. Yeah. Right? If you, uh, if you watched my... Resident Evil 7 video, you probably heard this one in the background. You probably also heard her in the uh, uh, outtakes for my Final Fantasy 7 video. She's the one who screamed yeet. So, yeah. Anyway, glad Estelle is here. So, let's get into it, all right? Okay, dokie. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. So, let's start with five things that we liked about the movie. Okay. So, for the first thing, the cast. Josh Hutcherson is the main star of this film, and he is a very underrated actor, in my opinion. Um, he plays Mike Schmidt in the film, the security guard from the first game, and he does a fantastic job in the movie. Also, Matthew Lillard absolutely steals the show as William Afton, and he even recites his famous I Always Come Back line from the games. Uh, he made an absolutely terrifying spring trap, and you could tell from the beginning of the movie when he first shows up, that he was going to have a huge impact on it. Um, truly, really everyone in the cast did a fantastic job in the film. What did you think about the cast? I thought they did a really good job. Yeah, I think so too. Now let's move on to the animatronics. Uh, Jim Henson's Creature Shop was used for the animatronics in the film, which made them look ten times better than they would have if, if it would have been done with like cheap CGI. Um, they even had costumes when... They were doing some of the more complex movements, like walking around, dancing, stuff like that. And you like the animatronics too, right? Yeah, I really do. Yeah? Who was your favorite one? I mean, since Freddy is like the most leader and kind of like the one who's like, you know, kind of leading the animatronics, I guess. To me, he always was like one of the like first animatronics that they made. Yeah. Uh, I just thought they were really good, and I kind of like Freddy the most. Yeah. In my opinion. I'd agree with that. I think Freddy, Freddy pretty much killed it. So, number three, there are plenty of Easter eggs in this movie. And if you're a FNAF super fan, there's plenty for you in this movie. Uh, the security desk that is in Mike's office looks like it's straight out of the game. It has little set pieces on it. Uh, there's the fan, the little soda cup sitting there the poster that says celebrate on it uh, it all really comes together to make it look even more authentic there's a dog animatronic shown briefly uh, that was from one of the novels i believe and it was also a hoax from the first game that there was some thing you could do to like make a dog animatronic show up or whatever um, even game theory's matt pat makes an appearance and there's a spoken cipher at the end of the credits that ominously spells out 
Come find me. Which I'm sure will be relevant in the sequel, but that's just a theory. A game theory! I'm just kidding. Anyway, what did you think? What did you find in there that you really liked? I mean, I liked how they did the animatronics. I thought it was like, it was really realistic. And honestly, they did have a lot of Easter eggs and stuff. And some of the animatronics in the background that were like, the suits were empty. They kind of looked like the ones from Chuck E. Cheese, which I thought was kind of funny. And I kind of liked some of their credits at the end. It was it was just really fun to watch. Yeah, and they had Balloon Boy in there as well. That was kind of funny. Yeah, and every time, like, the security guard saw him, he, like, turned him around the other way. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, of course, Balloon Boy's from the second game, so we'll probably see more of him in the future, but... Uh, Another thing we really liked about this is that the movie actually takes place over Five Nights. So, it's not called Five Nights at Freddy's for no reason. Um, it's not just a clever title. The games also take place over Five Nights. Um, usually there's a sixth night that's like even more terrifying. All the animatronics are bumped up to 11 and they just come at you nonstop. Uh, there isn't really a sixth night in the movie per se, but uh, it can be argued that Mike leaving... Freddy's to get like kind of treated for his injuries on the fifth night only to kind of come back and encounter spring trap that could be technically considered a sixth night I guess but uh, then we see the spring lock suit being activated and William getting all just like torn apart by it and that was just like the icing on the cake that was really cool what'd you think about that I mean honestly wasn't that dark he didn't see a lot of you know like actual blood stuff coming yeah. out and it wasn't like a big puddle of blood on his feet or whatever it was just kind of subtle but i kind of liked how they did like the suits it's like to me it was kind of hard to understand how he got into the suit without the things already activating that yeah was kind of weird but i guess i thought it was i thought it was pretty good yeah i did too i was and the, the movie is PG-13, so it doesn't really show a whole lot of, like, gory stuff in it. It's very toned down. you got to think, too, the, a lot of the uh, audience for the Five Nights at Freddy's games are children. I mean, it's been... I personally don't think of it as, like, a kid's game, but, you know, with all the little plushies and stuff like that, it's very much marketed for kids. So The last thing we have to say on the, the good side is that the movie was scary without being really over the top. And we kind of talked about that a little bit, but... Uh, the games are really kind of like a nail-biting experience without much time in between to really relax and reset. And the movie does a good job with that here. I mean, we see some of the conflicts that Mike is having and things like that. Um, there's always kind of a sense of terror or like what will happen next every time we walk into Freddy's in the movie. And uh, we even get a whole scene of what happens when uninvited guests show up. So there's a scene where like... Uh, this group of people break in and are going to like try and destroy Freddy's and the animatronics come to life and just mess their day up. And you had something that you liked in that, right? Yeah. I kind of, I mean, it's kind of their fault for like being killed and stuff. Well, not like in a really like gore way of being killed, but like, you know, but like, it is kind of their territory, so you're on their turf now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then there was that whole scene of, the, of Freddy just kind of standing there, and then the, the little kid going like, you're getting warmer. Oh, yeah, and I liked that because, like, it was kind of a jump scare, but, you know, I mean... The hand just kind of comes out of nowhere yeah. and, like, kind of grabs her, and then you see her yeah. get... See, like, the shadow of her getting, like, bitten in half. Yeah, but, like... It wasn't that gory. It was kind of just subtle. I mean, you didn't see the head, like, plop out of the mouth. You just, <laughs> you kind of just saw a shadow of her, like, falling on the ground. Yeah. But, like, you know. It was shocking without being, like, too, like, oh my goodness, this is over the top kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into the stuff that was not so good. Um, again, these aren't, like... Anything where I'm saying, like, oh my god, this movie's unwatchable because of these things. They're just more, like, kind of nitpicks or things that we wish were in there. The first thing on there was there was no Markiplier. But that's kind of okay. And let me explain what I mean by that. 
when the movie was first announced, we all wanted to see which YouTubers that were kind of famous for their FNAF fandom would be featured. Um, we got Matt Pat, who does the game theory stuff and discusses a lot of the lore behind Five Nights at Freddy's. We got Corey X Kenshin in there as well. Um, but where was the undisputed king of Five Nights at Freddy's? Well, he had a schedule conflict. Uh, Markiplier was supposed to play the security guard at the beginning of the film who kind of gets killed before Mike shows up. He had a conflict. He was busy filming his, his movie Iron Lung, which is another video game based film. So, you know, props to Markiplier. He's kind of, you know, he's branching out from like the let's play stuff he's been doing for a long time. And I'm, I'm really happy to see that. Um, personally, I would have wanted to see him have a bigger role than just being killed off right in the beginning. Um, so I'm hoping he makes it back for the sequel. Personally, I'd want him cast as phone guy, uh, which brings me to my next topic. There's no phone guy in this movie. How can you have a Five Nights at Freddy's movie without phone guy? I know, right? Um, so the closest we get is an instructional tape on the first night. It's like, you know, the typical welcome to Freddy Fazbear's thing, which is to me hardly close to being phone guy. Um, he plays a huge role in, in the first game. So it was kind of sad to see him absent. Maybe he'll be in the second movie and you know, whatever. But, uh, for those of you who need a refresher on who phone guy is, he's the guy who's like at the beginning of every night of five nights at Freddy's he's like the guy's like, hello, hello. Welcome to your first night at Freddy Fazbear's pizza. So hopefully we'll see him in another movie. Yeah, I've only seen, like, a couple people cosplay as him. I don't think he's, like, a big, big thing that people would dress up as. But, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not saying he's, like, a really bad character. I think he's pretty good. Yeah, and, I mean, he never really shows his face too much. I mean, it's always just his voice. But, mm-hmm. yeah, anyway, moving on to our third point. We wish it was longer. Uh, we were, We've been really looking forward to the release of this movie and uh i want to say when we went to go see mario was when we saw the first poster for five nights at freddy's and dad when's it coming out when's it coming out and it's like mm-hmm. october 22nd we, or 27th we can't wait for that day to get here and then uh you know of course we can't wait for a sequel you know the the movie was uh just under two hours which is kind of short for movies these days but uh of course we left the theater wanting more so we're just gonna have to watch it again yep and again (laughs) and again well dad knows how i am i whenever i see like a really good movie or it was like it left you at a cliffhanger it's like you want to keep watching it yeah it's like we want more like that's it come on give us more yeah um so okay moving on to our next topic here uh, we wanted to see William Afton as Purple Guy. Um, so we do get Springtrap in the movie, and that was that was amazing. You know, he knocked it out of the park as Spring as Springtrap. But in the games, um, William Afton is kind of known much more mysteriously as Purple Guy. Kind of just shows up in those little cutscenes. Um, he doesn't really be- become Springtrap until he's basically forced into the suit by the ghosts of the children. Uh, but still, for this movie, it worked out well. It's just one of those like things you kind of wanted to see him like maybe show up in a purple suit and then climb into the spring trap thing or something like that, right? Yeah. For our last point on here, we did want it to be a bit scarier. So the movie was terrifying. Don't get, don't get us wrong on that. As we said before, the scares were very well done. There's just a few moments that kind of didn't fit, like, them all coming together and building a fort yeah and at the same time it's like i love how they kind of just build up to the point where they actually like understand how to control the animatronics and i wasn't really expecting that wall of all those pictures like actually controlling the animatronics yeah it was kind of like they really like at the end they're just kind of like okay draw a picture and all of a sudden Now they're against William Afton, so I don't know. Little things like that could have been done a little bit better, but, you know, for the most part, uh, we liked it, right? 
So here's our final thoughts. Uh, this movie was very well done, and as always, Blumhouse just knocked it out of the park. And we can't wait to see more movies based on Five Nights at Freddy's, so I'm giving this movie four and a half out of five stars. Um, it was good, but I still want more. I know that's unreasonable given how just deep the story of this franchise goes, so we'll have to kind of see where it goes from here. Yeah, and I thought it would be more of a four out of five stars. It's because, like, I know this is kind of too early for, like, more people to come in, but I kind of wish there were a couple more characters from, like, um, you know, different scenes. Like from Security Breach yeah, and stuff like that? Security Breach. And I kind of wish I saw a little bit more. I kind of... The big thing that I thought was kind of bad, but, like, not, you know really bad but i kind of really did wish it was like more jump scares and a little bit more scary yeah i mean you you do get the you do get the sense of it being scary but like the there's really only one instance of the famous like scream from the animatronics and that's when foxy just kind of attacks somebody but you don't really see them get attacked mm -hmm. so i mean i know they're they're keeping with the pg-13 rating on this which i think they did great with it i don't think i'd really want to see it you know as an r because it's a again a movie i was happy to share with Stelly here but um yeah maybe we'll we'll kind of see where it goes from here right right all right everyone well thank you very much for watching our review of five nights at freddy's um and we'll see you in the next one yep bye, bye.